So, uh, welcome to all to this uh, roundtable, uh, Cosmos uh, roundtable on uh, Bogazici University protest, uh, a uh, unexpected challenge to authoritarianism. Uh, the Cosmos Roundtable are organized on uh, uh, important contemporary movements uh, in order to discuss not their analysis, which is still too early to have, uh, but uh, uh, to, to learn and understand more uh, about their uh, development while they are still uh, uh, active. We had this uh, type of uh, events on um, the American elections and the role of social movements in them, uh, on Chile, on Bolivia. The last one was uh, on the Lebanese uh, uprising uh, uh, of last year. Uh, and now, uh, with the help uh, of uh, our uh, Turkish and Kurdish community uh, at the Scuola Normale, uh, Delal, Batuan and others, uh, we uh, thought that what is uh, happening uh, in Turkey at the moment is uh, extremely relevant uh, for the development of um, social movements and the global wave uh, of movements that uh, has been going on in the last years and decade, uh, but also for our concerns with uh, scholars at risk, academic freedom, uh, and uh, the potential to uh, develop struggles on uh, these issues. And as I mentioned, Bogazici, as I mentioned, uh, mentioning the title of this event, uh, has been, at least for us, an uh, unexpected challenge uh, to authoritarianism because it started uh, as a specific response to the imposition uh, of a new rector from above, uh, from the regime. Uh, but, uh, but I think it developed even more than maybe the organizers had expected. So we are extremely pleased to be able to uh, discuss uh, about these uh, events with three uh, scholars that have been also uh, active uh, in the protest. Uh, and uh, uh, I will introduce uh, each of them and then give the floor to Lorenzo Bossi for his welcome. So we have to discuss with us Zeynep Gambetti, who is an independent scholar. Uh, she was associated professor of political theory at Bogazici University uh, until 2019. Uh, she's a, a critical theorist and works on collective agency ethics and public space. Uh, she has been uh, working on social movements in Turkey and in Mexico, uh, inspired by the work of Arendt, Marx and Foucault. Uh, she has been uh, uh, working on uh, uh, previous waves of protest in Turkey, like Gezi uh, protest, and among the publications are Rhetorics of uh, uh, Insecurity and the co-edited volume uh, with Judith Butler and Letizia uh, Sapsay on the vulnerability in resistance. We have also uh, uh, with us Merti Arslanap, I hope I pronounce it correctly, who is an assistant professor at the Department of Political Science and International Relations at Bogazici University. And before joining the university, he had a PhD in political science from Northwestern universities. He's also been working on social movements and repressions, also comparing Turkey with uh, Latin America, in particular Argentina and Mexico, and there's uh, various publications on this. And we have uh, a graduate students from uh, Bogazici University, Ogul Khan Idiveren, who is uh, Oljan, uh, who uh, is uh, as a research in, uh, interest in the areas of sexual health 
LGBTQ rights, citizenship and poverty, and who has been a member of the Istanbul Pride Week Committee for 2016 to 2020. So thank you very much for your uh, uh, participation in these uh, events. I will uh, uh, ask two sets of questions and then open the floor uh, to the uh, debate. But first, I want to give the floor to Lorenzo Bosi, uh, who is the representative of the Scuola Normale uh, in the Scholar at Risk Networks. Yes, thanks uh, Donatella and uh, thanks obviously to the, to the speakers today. Uh, I am a member of uh, Cosmos uh, and the Cosmos community, but today uh, I would like to welcome uh, all of you here in the name of uh, uh, Sar Italy, uh, which is uh, uh, supporting uh, the event. I uh, uh, was uh, very interested uh, to have uh, this uh, event organized uh, uh, in Italy. Uh, just a few words regarding uh, Sar Italy. Uh, is a network uh, uh, that was launched uh, in uh, 2019. And uh, what uh, uh, was like uh, uh, triggering uh, the organization of uh, this event, the impetus came in late 2016, 2017, when uh, many academics from Turkey were seeking assistance in the aftermath of the state coup in the country. Today, Sar Italy counts uh, 28 members, universities, research institutes, uh, and uh, scientific association. Uh, its main uh, uh, aims are to promote uh, academic freedom, and uh, protecting the fundamental rights of scholars across the world. And uh, if uh, uh, there, there, we are organizing a Sar Italy a petition in support of uh, Bogazici University community, and uh, I will try some way to share this uh, petition uh, through like uh, the uh, the chat or uh, I will uh, send uh, in the chat uh, a link where you can uh, also read uh, our petition. Uh, I think is uh, this is enough uh, for me to say it like now. And uh, thanks again. We are looking forward uh, to this uh, event and to questions and comments. Thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, and uh, the, the first set of questions that we have refers to the characteristics of this protest, to which uh, uh, different actors have participated, uh, to which uh, the students have been, uh, uh, in which the students have been very active, uh, but also the professors with uh, daily protest performances, giving their back to the um, rectorate. Uh, we know that it started in uh, January and that uh, has become, has acquired a lot of uh, uh, resonance. And uh, first set of, set of questions is about uh, the uh, innovations in the protest itself and the reasons why uh, you um, you, the, the reasons that you can mention about uh, the development uh, and the resonance of this uh, uh, protest. Uh, I know that Mert has uh, some slides to show us, and so I give him the floor. Okay, uh, great. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for inviting us. I'd like to thank uh, Professor Della Porta and the entire Cosmos team for inviting us and giving us this opportunity to uh, to basically voice our concerns and uh, and uh, de demonstrate what has been going on in our in our university and in Turkey in, in, in general. So you know, I, I consider these international solidarity events, academic solidarity events, as very valuable and important. So giving. Thank you for giving us this uh, opportunity and, and, and platform. So uh, I'm going to show some slides to, to walk you through the basic uh, uh, trajectory of events. But before I do that, I want to uh, make a few remarks on, 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 you know, on, on this question about you know, what triggered the events and uh, why it perhaps resonated. 
Uh, I'll probably revisit some of my points in the in the second round uh, for, for for lack of time. So uh, as, as as Professor De La Porta mentioned uh, in the introduction, uh, the, the protests at Boğaziçi University started um, uh, after President Erdogan on on January first midnight uh, appointed a new rector to our uh, to our university, and he did that by using the the powers he first acquired under the uh, state of emergency in 2000, uh, 2016. This appointment, you know, we were not informed of this appointment, uh, let alone consulted about it. So the, the the faculty members had absolutely no say over who would be appointed. To this, uh, to this, uh, to this position, uh, even the, the the name of the rector, this new rector Melih Pulu, we heard it for the first time once we once the appointment uh, was uh, it took place. Uh, we learned that we didn't know who he was. We learned that he was a former uh, rector of two private universities, recently founded. Uh, in his you know, academic career of 11 years, and before that, he was a uh, he was a member of the of the ruling political uh, party and and a candidate for the uh, for the MP position. So from where we stood, from where we stand, um, uh, this was a blatant political appointment, uh, which intended to put the university under the tutelage of the central government, as it was you know exercised in many other public universities. Over the over the over the last decade, and for that reason, you know, as professors, but also as, as as students, we've seen this as a great great threat to the to the institutional existence of Boazici as we uh, as we know it. And you know, this was not, as I said, a mere speculation about what could happen. Uh, this was very much informed by what we observed happening in other public universities with with politically appointed. Uh, rectors, where where basically these uh, these rectors use the extensive legal powers that they have to to disper uh, to to to, uh, to undermine academic freedoms, to to uh, to dismiss and and purge uh, dissident academics, many of our colleagues, uh, and in a way to obliterate any trace of a pluralist and free campus life, especially by disciplining students and faculty members who do not conform with the ideology of the of the uh, of the ruling party or the or the rector himself so for us this you know this created a, an imminent sense of a potential loss of uh, of the entire life world in a way that that sustained our uh, our academic practice on a on a on a daily uh, basis and i'm not going to get into the to the larger political institutional context of uh, of this uh, uh, of this uh, decision, uh, which I think Zeynep will discuss more uh, extensively. But what I can say is that what initiated the protest is an act of self-defense. This was an, an act of self-defense, defending what we have, what we cherish, uh, from uh, a blatant autocratic uh, authoritarian uh, encroachment. Um, so, and, and in a way, this is an... Uh, this is an act of self-defense to de de defend the institutional autonomy and an, an autonomous sphere that has not been yet uh, incorporated into the into the into the into the governance framework of the ruling uh, ruling party. And here, I mean, not legally, but uh, in a de facto uh, de facto uh, manner. So I'm going to expand these points later on. But let me now, you know, quickly walk you through. Uh, through the through the slides, and then I'll revisit some of these uh, uh, remarks. So. I guess you can see it, right? So, um, so as I said, the, the 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 decision was taken on on, on January first. On January third, as as faculty members, we issued our first declaration stating that we do not accept this undemocratic decision and that we do not that we are not going to give up uh, on the on the principles of university autonomy, meritocratic uh, hiring, pluralist campus life, and, and a high quality autonomous politically autonomous. Uh, uh, education and scientific uh, scientific research. Uh, on January 4th, the students organized their first protest in front of the campus. Uh, it started quite peacefully, but in the in the late afternoon, police began to forcefully disperse them, uh, leading to, to leading to uh, repression and to this to this iconic 
uh, picture. The same day, the, the, the authorities as well as the pro-government media began to target the students uh, using the familiar tropes of criminalization, calling them terrorists, you know, being manipulated by this and that power, uh, etc., uh, kind of deploying the entire uh, a governmental discourse of stigmatization and, and, and criminalization. The following day, we, uh, we basically started our uh, protest in front of the rector's uh, office turning, by turning our backs. Uh, these visuals that we've been, hol we've been holding ever since, uh, every noon time for half an hour, and, and particularly on Fridays, we gather as a very large group, sometimes you know, ex exceeding 200 people. And we've been doing that, you know, since uh, uh, since January fifth, under all sorts of uh, conditions, um, uh, on on <clears throat> on Wednesday, the following day, the police put siege on the entire vicinity of the campus with with barricades and and, and armored vehicles, and the siege has been there ever since. Uh, and 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 basically, the entire vicinity around the campus is declared as uh, as a zone of exception. Uh, in a way, and this led the students to move their protests either to other districts. Uh, this took place at least two times with major protests in Kadukoy across the Bosphorus, uh, but mostly into the campus where they've been protesting using very creative uh, repertoires uh, of, of peaceful protests, such as, you know, symbolic elections, yoga sessions in front of the rector's office, uh, adapting the lyrics of, 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 of songs, you know, chanting, dancing, uh, organizing deliberative forums, art exhibitions, uh, open, open lectures. So many different uh, uh, repertoires of peaceful, peaceful uh, protests. A second major turning point uh, was in the early uh, February, in the first week of February, when, uh, when basically the, um, uh, the authorities and the, and the pro-government media seized upon a picture in the art exhibition of, of students uh, as an evidence of insult to religious, uh, religious values, hence an opportunity to reframe the Boazici issue along the familiar lines of you know, cultural polarization in Turkey and especially putting the LGBTI community uh, in Boazici at the at the cent, uh, as the target and basically targeting them uh, with with hate speech and and and, and smear campaigns uh, closing down their uh, candidate club uh, and 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 arresting uh, students that took part in the in the art exhibition the lgbti community was not actually directly linked to the to the art exhibition but they were chosen as the as as the target as a way to basically reframe this issue along uh, as i said the the the, uh, the 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 cultural divides that exist in in in, in turkish uh, society the, the the rector himself joined the social media campaign two students got arrested this led to new you know the protests were ongoing but it kind of you know uh, escalated them. Students organized new protests in front of the, the students from other universities came to protest in front of the campus. 108 uh, protesters were arrested uh, in the first week of uh, February. Uh, our students, uh, again, you know, other students, uh, uh, other students organized protests within the campus in front of the rector's office. Uh, a battalion of police uh, force entered the campus uh, at night, in the evening, uh, and arrested uh, f 51 uh, students. Hap this was happening for the first time in the South Campus in the last 30 years. And protests spread to, to other parts of Istanbul, as well as uh, other cities. Uh, and overall, the police arrested around uh, 500 citizens, uh, like take, took into custody 500 citizens. Nine students were uh, arrested. 24 students are still under house arrest, and uh, I think more than 100 are with, 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 with travel bans. Uh, the same week, uh, the pro-government media, as well as officials, began to also target faculty members uh, with smear campaigns and you know, hate speech. 
calling them terrorists, provocateurs, militants, uh, etc. And you know, President Erdogan himself also joined this joined this campaign. Uh, on the midnight of February 6, uh, we kind of um, uh, a, a new decision was issued by by uh, by Erdogan. Uh, this time, basically. Um, founding two new faculties, a faculty of law and faculty of communication, none of which was demanded by the university. There was no preparation for it. There was no decision by the university bodies. There was also no decision by the higher education council. So, you know, two top-down uh, faculty uh, foundation decisions were issued by, uh, by Erdogan, and then a new dean was appointed to one of these, uh, to, the, to, the, to the new law, law school. And from where we stand, this was again, you know, this kind of confirmed our initial uh, concerns, uh, but it also showed us that, you know, the, 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 the basic objective of this political appointment of the rector is to, to redesign the university, to redesign its academic cadres with loyalist uh, appointments and, and, and then redesign the university uh, in line with the, the political and the ideological expectations of the, uh, of the government. Uh, and against these decisions, we've been continuing our, 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 our protests, and so do the, uh, do the students. And it's not only, you know, we do not only protest, obviously, on, on you know, uh, on publicly, but we are also organizing commissions. We are uh, hold, holding all sorts of forums, especially virtual forums, uh, creating committees, um, uh, as well as uh, speaking to the media in order to publicize our, 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 our situation. And that is also being done by students as well. Uh, they've been not only active on the streets and in the, in the public sphere, but they've been also very active uh, in social media to, 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 to communicate with the public uh, in a direct um, uh, manner using all sorts of repertoires, which I can elaborate furthermore uh, um, later on. Uh, so let me stop sharing here. But how am I doing with time? Like, do I still have some time, or uh, if you can um, um, sum up in a few minutes, uh, then we go back uh, okay. to you in the second round. Sure. Okay. So. Uh, so in, so in a way, I think, you know, let, let me make, you know, w one point and I'll save the other point uh, later on. I said that this was an act of self-defense and, and, and defending a, a public institution, defending a common, a common from, uh, from the authoritarian uh, encroachment. And I think one reason, there are several reasons why I think this, you know, resonated with the larger public. But one reason why it resonated, in my opinion, is that uh, what, what we are experiencing resembles what you know, others experience in very, in very different contexts in, in, in Turkey. Uh, there has been uh, a, co a concerted attack uh, against all sorts of commons, from ecological ones to the cultural ones. Uh, and, and therefore, there have also been you know, protests to defend them uh, from, these, from these encroachments. I think one of the basic strategies of this government has been accumulation by dispossession. And, and the political economists and political ecologists have been emphasizing this with regards to how you know, the, the government has, has been uh, using this strategy to, to, to appropriate uh, all sorts of spaces for accumulating further capital. But I think this is also true for cultural and symbolic spaces. Uh, I think the same strategy is also being deployed uh, people that use those spaces, their producers and their users are being dispossessed. Uh, and these spaces are then appropriated and uh, transformed for the kind of cultural, symbolic, ideological agenda of the, of the government. And in a way, just as, you know, perhaps people are defending their parks or their villages or, you know, lawyers defending their bar associations or citizens defending their municipalities from these acts uh, of encroachment and appropriation and, uh, and then accumulation, uh, we are also defending this space, the space that serves not the physical space, but the entire institutional cultural space, 
uh, that serves a certain public good. And I think that creates a certain resonance. Besides the importance of the public good that we produce, I think there is also some sort of, you know, resonance in the way in the way we are attacked and in the way and what we are trying to uh, defend here. Uh, so, you know, I can f further elaborate on this in the second round. So let me let me let me stop here. Thank you very much. This was uh, uh, a very complete presentation on the development of the events. Uh, you said it's the attack on a cultural commons and uh, uh, heavy repression, uh, which has been happening um, uh, uh, often uh, in uh, uh, Turkey uh, during the Gezi events, after the Gezi events, with uh, uh, the uh, first wave of heavy repression uh, in uh, uh, 2016 and around 2016 in the universities, and then uh, with the removal of democratically elected mayors uh, uh, in uh, several uh, Turkish municipalities. Uh, I, I want to ask uh, uh, to uh, Zeynep, who has also been uh, studying uh, the Gezi parts uh, and the repression there, uh, what's uh, happened, what is different in this protest? Uh, uh, then uh, uh, in protests that happened in previous moments, but with less resonance. So we will discuss later on also about the continuities and discontinuities with Gezi uh, Park's protest. But uh, uh, what I uh, wanted to ask uh, now is uh, how do you explain that this protest became resonant, more resonant than uh, a previous attempt to resist, uh, to attack to academic free freedom uh, in uh, and around 2016, uh, and then the removal of the elected mayors and other uh, attack on uh, the commons that uh, uh, Mert has uh, mentioned before? And yep, you have the floor. Yeah. Well, um, thank you. I would start. Uh, uh, I would like to start by thanking you, uh, Donatella, for asking us to to uh, come over and um, uh, share what we are experiencing, uh, and also think about it out loud collectively, perhaps with you and with the whole Cosmos team, uh, among whom I have uh, friends uh, from old times and uh, colleagues, very precious colleagues. Um, and I want to just underline that these events are ongoing. So um, they are, I mean, it, it's very difficult academically to analyze events in the heat of action. Uh, and that is what we're trying to do, so are uh, our reflections are more impressionistic than really systematic. And for instance, this morning, we just learned that something had happened at the university that um, the, vice, um, uh, the vice rector uh, had also been nominated uh, to the head of the Institute of Social Sciences. And so the whole day we were dealing with that. So. Uh, what we say today may change tomorrow. So, I mean, keep that in mind. This is an ongoing protest, and this is a very unpredictable uh, power uh, government. Um, so things may change. Um, but uh, just to answer your question in a very indirect way, I would like to shortly follow up on what um, Mert was saying, uh, because I think we first must understand um, the nature of the political power that we are facing in Turkey, right? Um, I mean, Matt uh, sort of underlined it, but I want to stress it a bit more. Uh, the AKP government has been hollowing out institutions in the judiciary sphere, the political sphere, economic sphere, social sphere for the past five years. Um, and how is it doing this? It is doing this by accruing more and more powers in the hands of the president, um, by appointing people close to the government to high positions within several institutions, or by expelling those who do not comply with its objectives. 
the government is constantly meddling with institutional autonomy, uh, not only in the universities, uh, but like I said, also in the judiciary, also in, in um, the political administrative sphere, uh, in the social sphere. Uh, and it is using laws and regulations to do that also. So uh, the, 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 the tools used are legalistic in certain places. Uh, it doesn't hesitate in using the discourse of terrorism to remove, uh, like you said, the democratic uh, elected mayors, um, it, particularly in the provinces uh, where the, uh, the Kurdish population uh, is uh, the highest, um, in order to appoint trustees in their place. So what we are witnessing is a form of Gleichschaltung, uh, as the Germans put it, or bringing into line of all instances of society. Um, and, but I should also note that similar processes are underway in other countries, such as Hungary, Poland, uh, Russia, Brazil, where right-wing populist parties are growing increasingly authoritarian. Right? Um, comparative studies are already being produced uh, in this respect. So it would be interesting to compare and contrast the protest movements that this new form of authoritarianism is provoking. So in Turkey, uh, Mert also mentioned this very briefly, but I'd like to underline it a little bit more. Um, the AKP is also using neoliberal policies to concentrate power in its hands. Um, on the one hand, it is um, sort of fueling economic growth by launching huge infrastructural projects like this canal that it intends to dig between the Black Sea and the Marmara, parallel to the Bosphorus, irrespective of the damage that this will inflict on the environment, on the livelihoods in the region, etc. These projects serve the purpose of transferring money to private companies with close ties to the AKP, right? Uh, these are public projects where public money is being transferred to private companies. Uh, and this also has a disciplining influence on corporations because those who do not comply with the objectives of the government are left out of the distribution of public money. Uh, on the other hand, um, lower to middle class employees are being deprived of um, social uh, public security or housing schemes uh, because retirement pensions, healthcare, housing opportunities are now being privatized. So uh, whole portions of the population are indebted and are thus obliged to modify their ways of life to be able to pay back their loans. Uh, this has a disciplining influence on individuals, as, as Mauricio Lazarato would say, right? Um, in short, this government uses um, legal as well as economic and biopolitical power to bring society into line. Uh, and it goes, of course, without saying that um, the sovereign reflexes of the government are deployed as soon as other tactics fail to produce the intended results. Uh, for example, you mentioned it, Donatella, the, after the uh, 2016 failed coup, hundreds of thousands of public employees, uh, including judges, prosecutors, army personnel, police officers, clerks, etc., were removed from their post by midnight decrees. Uh, the government also closed down 15 universities and expelled thousands of academics from their posts. Um, but actually, the criminalization of academics uh, started before the failed coup, as Lorenzo um, underlined, uh, when uh, 1,128 academics and PhD students signed uh, the petition, we will not be party to this crime in January 2016. Um, that petition was penned as a reaction to the government's anti-terror operations in Kurdish towns uh, within Turkish territory, right? 
Um, but then trials against the signatories were initiated on grounds that uh, uh, they were carrying out propaganda for a terrorist organization. And hundreds of, hundreds of academics who signed the petition were expelled from the universities by presidential decree. Uh, so it was in this period that the government decided to banish internal elections at the universities. Uh, and reintroduce the top-down method of nominating the rector. So it was under conditions of emergency law that the university... Nereden açıldığını biliyor musun? Ben şu an hiç ses duymuyorum. Bütün görüntüler var. Okay, there's somebody trying to find the view, but... Okay. Do you hear me right now? Uh, okay. Yes, yes. I couldn't okay. understand the interruption. Okay. Uh, please, uh, let me just say, please switch off uh, mic uh, and uh, video if you are not uh, participating, uh, talking at the moment. Okay, so, um, so I was just saying that it is during this period that under emergency law that the attack against the universities was aggravated. Um, um, and I want to just underline, this is a lot of history for you, but, uh, you know, we have a, a, a long history of military coups in Turkey. Um, the, uh, after the 1980 military coup, uh, directors were nominated by the government. Um, and it was Boğaziçi University who first defied the law and chose its own rector in 1992. So from 1992 to 2016, Boğaziçi always chose its own rector. And actually the nomination of the rector uh, was uh, by the, the, um, the faculty themselves was legalized after uh, Boğaziçi made this de facto move, de facto act of defiance uh, in 1992. In short, uh, we're back to tutelage, yeah, but instead of a military one, we have a civilian uh, type of tutelage uh, today. So this tutelage uh, proceeds by hollowing out of institutions, as I said, uh, but in, I don't think it is in order to impose any particular well-defined ideology. The, the aim is to concentrate political power and economic power in the hands of the government and the pro-government clique. Uh, religious discourse is sometimes used in order to achieve that purpose, but sometimes nationalist discourse is used. Uh, at times, the anti-LGBT uh, discourse is used. The discourse of terrorism is used. The discourse of law and order is used invariably to achieve this aim. The tactics are the same. The tactics used are the boundlessness, the limitlessness of power. There are no normative, moral, legal, or commonsensical limits to what can be done. Uh, this, this causes a, 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 very, uh, um, a, a very huge uh, sense of unpredictability uh, because Sometimes these measures are, like I said, midnight decrees. They are shock measures. They, they keep producing permanent change. They are speedy, rapid measures that impede civil society or op the opposition to respond immediately. There is constant polarization. Um, and one of the factors I think that must be underlined, this Gleichschaltung consists of bringing all standards in society uh, onto the level of mediocrity. Now, Boazici is a very prestigious un uh, university with a very high standards of education. Um, so the appointment not only tends to control Boazici, but to reduce its quality, to bring it to this level of mediocrity uh, in order to subdue it to more control. So in short, I would like to say that this is a process of de-democratization and the resistance at Boazici uh, as well as elsewhere in Turkey aims at the opposite. The resistance uh, aims at re-democratization, 
I think these, that is what underlines the stakes, uh, right? So you tell me how I'm doing on time, um, if I should go on with uh, specifying a bit uh, more about uh, Boazici protest or not, Donatella. You have a couple of minutes more and then we can go back to the to this topic also uh, in uh, the second round of questions uh, after we uh, hear also Oljan. So if you want to take a couple of minutes now. Uh... Okay, just to round up, I mean, maybe we can do the comparison with Gezi and the uh, Academics for Peace uh, mobilizations in the second round. Um, I just it. want... I just want to say that um, Boazici ha had, uh, has still a, a very democratic tradition where uh, plurality is not only tolerated but also encouraged, right? Uh, I mean, it was a, a space that was freed of censorship into which the political taboos uh, uh, of, of uh, the government several governments, not only the AKP government, but all other governments in Turkey, did not enter. Taboo issues could be discussed, could be taught. Research on these taboo issues could be done. Uh, students could organize activities um, on any uh, issue that they found relevant. And that was what made Boazji special, actually. Um, I just wanted to underline that uh, the university was run democratically also. Uh, it was run democratically in such a way that uh, we not only um, elected our rector, but also the department was the main decision-making body uh, in, the, in the university. And so neither the dean nor the rector could actually um, dictate to the, to the department who would need to be employed, what kind of courses uh, would be given, or any other administrative decisions. So the department itself was sovereign. Uh, and then the department would uh, sort of uh, transmit its decision to the, the dean at the level of the, the faculty that then would be transmitted to either the university senate or to the university um, council, uh, the, the um, governing board. Um, and so it was a debating university. All of the decisions were taken through negotiation, um, a compromise, but also consensus, uh, and with a lot of debate. Um, and what happened um, during these protests was, I think from even day one, uh, was chief faculty and students started organizing the resistance in a horizontal manner. Uh, Mert uh, slightly touched upon this uh, by immediately gathering, gathering together to discuss in um, uh, online forums or sometimes physical forums by creating their own communication uh, channels to bypass the official communication channel within the university by creating several committees uh, involved in uh, relations with the press, uh, with, uh, with uh, you know, the, the agenda of the meetings, in the, uh, developing strategies uh, uh, and what have you. Uh, and so by um, sort of organizing in a, in a very grassroots manner, if I may, uh, and by creating a new we, I mean, I would like to come back to that if it's okay uh, with you, Donatella. Uh, these protests uh, turned academics at Boazici who are decidedly, admittedly, almost apolitical. I mean, the majority are not very interested in politics uh, and they're not activists either. Uh, although we have a, a, a huge number of signatories at the university, signatories of the Academic for Peace petition, this is not a very politicized university. But all of a sudden, this attack created, constituted a new unity, a new we, that uh, was created through the protests themselves, in action, uh, forming a community uh, that didn't exist before in the same way uh, as it exists today. 
And I think that is why uh, the university is providing such an inspiring example. Because I think the problem with the attacks on other universities is that those universities found themselves divided among those who were courageous enough to protest and those who uh, decided to, you know, shut up, comply, and go back to business as usual. Uh, I think it's the first time in history, somebody says it in a panel uh, last week, the first time in history that the university is so united around uh, its uh, will to defend the principles and re-democratize the university. So I will stop here and hoping we will uh, be discussing uh, many other issues in the second round. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot. It's uh, very uh, relevant and very interesting. I uh, also, uh, you finish with an optimist note. Uh, and in fact, uh, in several of uh, uh, the photos that were shown, there was uh, the rainbow uh, as a symbol, which is a, a symbol of the LGBTQ movement, but also of hope. Uh, and what I've read uh, about the protest is that notwithstanding repression, there was uh, uh, a lot of uh, sense of friendship, a lot of uh, sense of uh, also happiness uh, to a certain extent, uh, and that there was an encounter. So Zanep was saying uh, a new subjectivity emerged from uh, the pictures that we have seen also in the Western media, uh, uh, this uh, sort of diversity is quite evident. Uh, and the issues of uh, uh, gender rights seems to be uh, very central uh, to a potential debate between uh, different groups to the defense uh, of uh, uh, democratic rights uh, uh, and um, uh, we had also debates uh, uh, previously a Cosmos Roundtable on Poland, something that uh, was mentioned before, different movements that also, in which also the issues of uh, uh, gender rights was very central. So um, questions uh, uh, I, I want to ask uh, to Oljan is also about these uh, diversities, which was proper also of uh, the Gacy Park protest uh, uh, and how it plays a role in this uh, uh, innovation of uh, the, the forms of protest and the creation of uh, a new subjectivity that were mentioned before by Mert and Zeynep.